guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about what I do to stop my painful period cramps. Without further ado, let's get to it. Unfortunately, I'm no stranger to painful period cramps. I noticed in the past whenever I ate very badly, like a lot of sugar, refined food, my period cramps would get so extremely painful that I couldn't even get out of bed for a day or two. About three months ago, I started eating kimchi as my daily diet. Then when my period came, I noticed that I didn't have any period cramps. I felt normal and it was a miracle. I thought I was cured. I thought it's because I was trying to be more healthy by exercising. So not until when I ran out of kimchi and I stopped eating it for about two weeks before my next period came and my normal extreme crampy period is back. For some reason at the time, it wasn't obvious to me that it was my kimchi that was preventing me from experiencing my period cramps. Not until when I ran out and stopped eating it for about two weeks. And then when my period came with the same intensity of my period cramps, it was that time that I started to connect the dot between kimchi and my period pain. Then I got online right away, trying to find any supportive documents to back up my new assumptions about how eating fermented food daily can prevent painful period cramps. But to my surprise, I actually cannot find too many articles talking about how fermented food can help with period cramps. Luckily, I was able to locate a specific article talking just about that on a website called wellnessblessing.com. Here we are on the website of wellnessblessing.com. As you can tell from the title, three ways to prevent painful periods by nourishing the gut microbiome. Let's dive in. Let me give you a summary of this article. The whole article is basically about how healthy eating habits that nourish our gut microbiome can reduce inflammation in the uterus to prevent PMS, menstrual cramps, and other uncomfortable period symptoms naturally. According to them, to address painful periods is all about good nutrition throughout the whole month leading up to the period to sustain healthy digestion, support the gut microbiome, and eliminate excess estrogen. Eating an unhealthy diet filled with processed foods, sugar, and chemicals can disrupt our gut microbiome and lead to increased pain and discomfort, hormonal imbalance, and inflammation. Nourishing the gut microbiome through daily healthy eating is essential for long-term health, increased energy, balanced hormones, and pain-free period. And according to them, eating the three F every day we prevent painful periods. The three Fs are fiber, fat, and fermented food. Now let's look at each one in details. Let's look at the first one, fiber first. So the first thing we need to do is to eat more fiber. Feeding the microbiome with lots of plant-based fiber to support digestion because high in fiber eliminates excess estrogen in our bodies, which results in less discomfort during period. The next one is fat. Make sure to eat healthy fat. The main reason is because fats like omega-3 has the anti-inflammation properties, which helps to support healthy hormone production and reduce inflammation that can lead to pain-free period. And the last one is fermented foods. Eating fermented foods is so important because it is the primary way people can support the health of the gut microbiome to prevent inflammation and period cramps. I do agree with them that natural holistic self-care way is the only way to reduce gut inflammation so that we women can prevent and ease PMS period cramps and other period discomfort naturally. I hope you will find this information very helpful. On a side note, it is important to differentiate your normal period pain from the severe one. If your pain turned out to be too severe, maybe it's time to visit a doctor. If you are ready to enjoy pain-free periods, all you need to do is to incorporate fermented food in your daily diet. We are not made the same, and the amount of fermented vegetables that I need probably is different than what you need. I usually eat about half a cup of fermented vegetables for lunch and another half cup for dinner. I personally will not go over one cup because I believe that moderation is the key to good health. Just like everything else, 
you should always start something new slowly. I remember when I first started eating kimchi on a daily basis, my body felt very gassy and bloated. But as time goes by, it subsides. So I recommend you to start slowly with only half cup of fermented vegetable and then see how your body reacts. As your body gets more used to your new fermented vegetable consumption, you can slowly increase it all the way to one cup. I learned from my personal experience that the most effective way to pain-free period is to eat fermented vegetables on a daily basis without taking a break. I understand it can be very costly to get fermented vegetables from the grocery store. That's why today I'm going to show you how to make your own fermented vegetables at home. Welcome to my kitchen. These are all the ingredients it takes going to make some yummy fermented vegetable. I have about three pounds of vegetable here, two more size of cabbage and three carrots one big jalapeno and two cloves of garlic. I want to make a spicy version of sauerkraut. And for the jars, I didn't go out to purchase some specific jars. I just used repurposed jar. So this is the jar that used to store my spaghetti sauce I got from the store. And I just save it up and use for my fermented vegetable. And you can do the same thing. And the lid here is like this. You have to wash them well with hot soapy water and that will be good enough. And the next thing we are going to do is to shred all this vegetable. I have already washed all the vegetable very well. If you have a shredder, you can run your cabbage through the shredder. Probably will be a lot faster than cutting it. I don't have one, so I'm just going to cut my vegetable. The next thing is to cut the carrot. You can also shred the carrot if it's easier for you. Just finished cutting the carrot. The next thing is the jalapeno. I'm going to de-seed it to prevent it from getting too spicy. Get all the seed out. We don't need all the seed. Now we just have the garlic to crush and we'll be done. Okay, finally we are done chopping. The next thing we need to do is to put in one and a half tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon and then a half tablespoon. Okay. I am using sea salt in my case. Whatever type of salt that you are using, make sure that it has no iodine in it because the iodine in it will kill all the good bacteria that we want to encourage the growth of it. Time to massage the vegetable very well. We have to do it for about at least 5 to 10 minutes. What the salt does is to draw all the water out of the vegetable. And we would like to remain the liquid in the vegetable that we are going to pour in the jar. So we just need to scrunch up the vegetable and massage in all the salt that we just put in. Just keep doing it for at least 5 to 10 minutes. When the sauerkraut is sitting in a pool of water like this, it's done. This is the brine. The next step is we need to put all the sauerkraut in our bottle. All we need to do is to just put all the vegetable in. We don't want to fill all the bottles all the way up because we want to make room for all the fermentation happens. A lot of gases is doing all the job during fermentation. They need some room and sometimes you will find liquid sipping out of the glass jar and that is okay. I'm going to use the spoon to just push all the vegetable down. If you have jars that their mouth are wider, it's sure helpful. It's easier to put the vegetable in, but my spaghetti jars have been working out great for me. As you can see, I'm done putting all the vegetable in three of my jars and they are not all the way up to the top. I have it about, I would say, two thirds of the jar fill up. And here is the brine that we need to pour into each of the jar. I also forgot to mention that we need to leave about a few pieces of bigger cabbage leaves for the end so we can cover it up to prevent the little tiny pieces of cabbage to float up. So luckily, I have an extra cabbage I can use. If you are making it 
make sure that you leave some. We need to make sure that all the vegetables are submerged under the brine. And the next step, I have already washed this cabbage. We are going to put the big cabbage on top to prevent the little tiny cabbages to float up. Another one. And the next step is we need to put some weight to weight down the vegetable. Some people use pebbles or rocks. I'm going to use a Ziploc bag to fill it up with water and I will show you what I'm going to do. I grab a brand new clean Ziploc bag and fill it up with tap water. Squeeze air out of the bag and then just put it inside the jar to put weight down on the vegetable. Make sure you seal it well. And I'm going to close all the lids slightly tight, not too tight, so that during fermentation all the gases that are percolating have room to sip out all the juice. So in this case, I'm going to put all these jars in a tray so my tray can catch all the liquid. I'm finally done. It's amazing how three pounds of vegetables can fit in three spaghetti size of jars and they are not fill up all the way either. The next thing we need to do is to leave these guys alone, put them away from direct sunlight at constant temperature around 60 to 75 degrees. If your home is on the warmer side, you will be able to enjoy this fermented vegetable after five days. I hope that this video will get you interested to make your own fermented vegetable. There are also many different types of fermented vegetable you can make. Like kimchi, I have a video for it. I'm going to attach a link below in the description box. There are also other types of fermented food that will be beneficial to your health, like tempeh, kombucha, miso, and other type of pickled vegetables. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, please share with your friends, like, and subscribe to my channel. Know. If you have any questions, please check the description box below. Until then, we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.